Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we're going to get into some news and rumors here on today's show. And the top three topics that I see swirling around the internet this morning are around Darren Waller. Is he going to be getting a brand new deal? We've talked about this a bunch on the show. I'll go into some of the latest around him. And Dominican Sue, rumors are back again because ESPN's Paul Gutierrez had some interesting things to say. And then what's the latest going on around Colin Kaepernick to the Raiders? The first story that we're going to hit here is the one that I personally care the most about because I have always been Team Waller. When Waller got his first contract extension, I made a video about it. Two days later, the Raiders made the move. I put out a video last week, the week before that. I have been a big believer that Waller deserves a new deal or a new extension. And the latest around it actually is coming out of Waller's mouth himself. He was on the Russ Tucker podcast yesterday and didn't really say too much about the contract details, but did hint that, hey, I'm probably going to be getting a new deal soon because he was asked about the new deal. He said his agent was working on it. In fact, I have the exact quote here from the Raiders star tight end about the tight end market and his contract. This is what he said. My agent is working on that. I understand it, but I know if I focus on it too much, it could take away from my job and learning a new system and just continuing to try to evaluate and take care of my body in the right way. We'll get it done. Well, how about this? If you guys want 83 to get a contract extension, I want you to go ahead and like the video right now because this is a dude who brings a lot of firepower, not only on the field, but brings a lot of stuff off the field as well. And like good locker room stuff. I love Darren Waller, and I want the Raiders to go ahead and extend him. So please like the video right now. So is Darren going to end up getting a brand new deal? I've been saying it. I'm not going to change my tone on this. It's for just win, babies. Believe it, baby. Waller said in that quote, we'll get it done. I believe in him, and you have to respect the fact that he's like, man, I'm not really trying to worry about the money, which I 100% believe him because he didn't really worry about the money in his first deal. He wanted to be a Raider. He wanted to make sure that he had some security. Don't we all? He is letting his agent do his job, and he is going to go ahead and do his job, which is learning the new system making sure that he's got the right relationships with this new regime. But he definitely should feel some type of way. He is the 17th highest paid tight end in the National Football League as it stands right now. And then after the whole and David and Joku deal that just went down just a few days ago, I mean, if I'm Darren and if I'm his agent, I'm like, you know what? I might be coming off a year where statistically is my worst year in the last three. 55 grabs, 665 yards, two touchdowns. If you look at the games that he played, that's 11 games. I know sometimes y'all make fun of me, but if you take those 11 games and turn it into a 17-game sample size, I mean, you're talking about a dude at 143 targets, 85 catches, over 1,000 yards, picked up over 40 first downs, and sure, only three touchdowns. But you know what? If Darren Waller can be our second or third option behind Devontae Adams, and he's giving you this type of production here, it's worth a lot more than the 17th highest paid tight end in the NFL. So what you guys are going to see here is this. I'm going to roll through the players that make more money right now per year than Waller. You got Kittle, you got Kelsey, Dallas Goddard, Mark Andrews. All those players over 14 mil. If I'm Waller, that's the lowest. I'm not going underneath what Mark Andrews makes. And if his agent is doing his job correctly, he should get around Kelsey, Kittle, maybe even more than those guys. You look at Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, both tied at number five. Josh McDaniels, they run a lot of two tight end sets. I can't imagine that Waller gets anything less than 12.5. David Njoku got a new deal. Gasecki, Dalton Schultz, those are all franchise tag players. But like, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, yes, is actually listed as a tight end as it stands right now. And no disrespect to Will Disley, but nobody thinks Will Disley should make more money than Darren Waller, which his deal this season is sitting somewhere at around $7.6 million when you consider the fact that some of his extra workout bonuses guaranteed money. So what do you guys think about this? Because usually when a top player gets a new deal, a lot of times they can either reset the market, maybe they're the highest paid player. This goes into the conversation. So show the Raiders, 
Make Waller the highest paid tight end in the NFL. If you're like, yes, Mitch, type Y for yes. If you're like, you know what? I don't know if he should be the highest paid tight end coming off the year that he did. Then you can please go ahead and type your end for no. You can always have disagreements on whether or not a player deserves to be the highest paid guy or not. He should definitely be top four. There is no if ands, or buts about it. If his agent does not get Waller at least $14 million per year on his new contract, then the agent sucks. And I don't think that the agent sucks. And he's going to go ahead and he's going to get his deal. There is zero, and I mean zero doubt in my mind. When it really comes down to contract extensions, it's Hunter Renfro, it's Darren Waller, and then there's really nobody else that I personally believe deserves one. The deal that I have continued to say over and over and over again that I would give Waller would be this. This would be the Waller extension that I give him. Three years, total of 48. $16 million per year, which that deal alone would make him the highest paid tight end in the NFL. You get about $30 million in guarantees. But when you tack that three years onto his already two-year contract, you're looking at a five-year, $62 million deal, so 12.4. So Darren Waller then would be the technically seventh highest paid tight end over the next five years. I know that Waller is well worth more than that, but which is why I am more than okay making him the highest paid guy because he's got two years left on his deal. Now, I've also been told you might see a situation where they just up his, we'll say, overall contract of two years. They throw on another deal, giving him a lot of guarantees. So instead of him getting like a three-year extension tacked onto his two years, you might see them give them a one-year extension, go back to a three-year deal for Waller, and up that money a lot higher as well. Just something to keep in mind that I've been told. Next here, coming up on the Raiders report, what is the latest going on around Adomkin? So we talked about him a bunch two weeks ago. There was a lot of stories, reports out there that the Raiders were linked to the big defensive tackle. I'm going to tell you the latest going on around him and what Paul Gutierrez had to say. But first, if you're not following me over on Locals, then please go ahead and do so. I'm actually going to be doing a live here in like two hours. So scan this QR code for exclusive videos, expanded access. I'm just going to be able to get in closer contact with all of y'all. RaidersReport.Locals.com is the link. It's going to be available for you all down in the comment section and in the description of today's video. If you just want more inside scoops, if you take a lot of pride in knowing more Raiders content than other people out there, Locals is the way to do it. I will say it's for diehard Raider fans only, so if you don't consider yourself a diehard, Locals probably isn't for you. If you do, then seriously, scan that QR code. Let's talk about Adamican Sue, who is a free agent Defensive tackle played last season on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. ESPN writer Paul Gutierrez believes that the Raiders could consider signing Sue. Why? In his article, he mentions Raiders currently have 88 players on the roster, and Vegas is going to be getting $19.75 million after June 1st. That money is coming from Corey Littleton. That money is coming from Carl Nassib, and the money that the Raiders will be getting after the June 1st cuts. So essentially, you're sitting here with 19.75 mil, and I'm going to roll through some of these quotes that Gutierrez had to say and then give you guys my two cents on it. Here's the first quote. There's four of them, so sit tight. Hear me out here. Sure, the Raiders already have 27 defensive tackles on the roster. He's being sarcastic. The actual number is eight, but it feels like more. Having signed Bilal Nichols in free agency, re-signed Jonathan Hankins, and drafted Neil Farrell Jr. and Matthew Butler, among other moves. But Coach Josh McDaniels has said he likes to make a strength, well, stronger. Imagine, then a perennial, uh, perennial excuse me, bad boy in Dominican Sue suiting up for the erstwhile bad boys of the NFL. Sure, Sue is 35 and the five-time Pro Bowler's best days are behind him, but he has not missed the game since 2011 and has missed only two games in his career. Sue had six sacks in each of the past two seasons with 32 combined quarterback hits. Teaming him with Nichols, who had eight sacks combined the past two seasons to collapse the pocket from the interior would free up defensive end Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. That was Paul Gutierrez's thoughts, and my thoughts have been very similar to a lot of the things that he mentioned. You're not looking at Sue to be that guy anymore. You're looking at Sue to take on double teams and free up Crosby and Chandler Jones and all your other edge rushers. So with everything that Gutierrez said, with everything that I have said in the past about Sue, 
Type S for sign. Type P for pass. Should the Raiders go out and sign and Dominican Sue? I am going to continue to say sign. Yes, he's going to be able to help out this defense. With the injury of Jonathan Hankins, it's not very a serious injury, but I do want to make sure that the Raiders have the proper depth at DT. Yes, they do have eight current defensive tackles, but how many of those guys can you actually rely on? You're going to sit up here and tell me, Jonathan Hankins, Bilal Nichols, I can rely on those two guys. Yes, you drafted two rookies, but they're still rookies. The other players on that defensive tackle line, they're all question marks in my opinion. So, yes, you have eight bodies, but in terms of being able to rely on them, you don't have that many. So I know I can rely on Adamican. I also know that he's going to bring that toughness. He's going to bring that competitive nature. Sure, he might get a flag thrown his way once or twice, but his veteran leadership and his tenacity that he would bring to that line and to the entire locker room is something that I think a lot of people would like. And you, even if the Raiders can get this type of production out of him, you would be very happy about that. Why? Because it frees up a lot of other players on that defensive line. The next story coming up here. Colin Kaepernick, what's the latest going on with him? The Raiders had a workout with him last week and apparently went pretty well. I'll go into the latest around that, but first, the offseason is the time of the year that you guys need to follow me on IG. You need to follow me on Twitter. I am getting ready to go to a bachelor party later on this week, so even if I can't make a video on every single topic, I will keep you guys up to date on my social media. If the story's big enough, I mean, I'm just going to be going live at a bachelor party. It's going to be weird. It's going to be fun though I know some of my old college buddies are like we come on the Raiders report I'm like only if you're ready to drink some fireball that's the only way you can do it but the offseason is the time to make sure you're following me so please I'm at Mitchell Renz 365 the latest on Kaepernick is the workout went well the Raiders were impressed from what I heard by his arm strength and his conditioning. I don't know if that means they weren't impressed by his accuracy, but that's what they were impressed with. A deal could happen. The Raiders are at least going to leave the door open on it, but nothing is, I'll say, going to happen anytime soon. This is going to be one of those moves that could take some time. And when I say take some time, in the NFL, when a story like this comes out, if something doesn't happen in 24 hours, that's, that's kind of like waiting a little bit, right? So I could see the Raiders taking a few extra days to make sure that this is the right situation for them, not only off the field, but absolutely on the field. And any time that certain situations like this come up, I always try to educate myself and, all right, what are other people saying about this topic around the Raiders because I have a very strong opinion on the Raiders side of it but what are some other you know opinions out there I saw this one from Warren Moon and Warren Moon is one of my all-time favorite quarterbacks he's actually my dad's like top three I believe up there however this is what Warren Moon, Moon had to say about the Raiders signing Kaepernick Maybe there's a package of plays that he can put it in that help the Raiders, maybe in a game time situations. If you look at the backups they have right now, they don't have a whole lot of experience as far as game time. So I think it makes a lot of sense to bring him in and take a look and see what he's still got left. That's what Warren Moon had to say. And a lot of times, certain players, yes, they might have been playing more recently, like Jared Stidham and Nick Mullins, but Colin Kaepernick, no doubt, has more real-time NFL experience than both of those players. My argument would be, what's better? Your playing experience from 2016 to 2011 or more recently? You guys can let me know what you all are thinking, but... This is your opportunity. I'm always giving my just win babies. I used to do the Chucky heads, the no Chucky heads. It's kind of what made my show popular. But here's your chance to be the host of the Raiders Report. How many just win babies on Vegas signing Colin Kaepernick? Zero, one, two, three, or four. If you're new to the show and you don't understand what I'm talking about here, every time I get a rumor that I want to give my opinion on, I break it down with just win babies. If I say something zero, just win babies, I say tuck rule, tuck that, means the rumor story not going to happen. One, one just win baby, 25% truth, and then so on. Two just win babies, 50% chance. Three just win babies, 75% chance. Four just win babies, 100% chance that it's going to happen, hence the believe it baby. So one more time. How many just win babies on Vegas signing Colin Kaepernick? I am going to continue to say that I am sitting here at one. Though, if I was the one making decisions, I would not bring in Cap to the Silver and Black.